Hello, and welcome back to the third section of our course on Mastering CSS, Creating a Page Layout with Floats. In order to create a multi-column layout supported in all browsers, we are going to use floats. Floats are very simple at first glance, but have a few unintuitive quirks to them that can cause some frustration when not completely understood. This may be due in part because the true origination of floats wasn't for layout. It was to achieve the common magazine technique where text flows easily around an image. So in this section, we're going to deep dive into floats, going over the basic usage of floats in this video, followed up by creating a layout with floats and curing the headaches caused by floats. Let's start this section with an introduction to floats. We'll first talk about the original purpose of floats, followed by the basic problem that floats caused, and how to clear elements that come after floats. So we have a new HTML page about shark movies. Now looking at this page, it's basically an image on top of a title, on top of some text, on top of a link, and there's three sections like that for each of the three movies. The HTML is fairly straightforward. There are three sections, each with a div with a class of wrapper, which is centering the content. Inside the wrapper, there is an anchor tag with an image inside of it. Underneath that is an H1, the title, and some paragraph text, followed by a anchor tag that's a link. So the idea here is if we look at the final project, we want to float the image to the left and have the headline and text flow around it. So let's target that image in the CSS. Instead of targeting the image in our selector, let's actually target the image's container, which is this anchor tag with a class of figure. Now, I don't want to just target the dot figure class as my selector because I may use this class on other image containers and may not want them to all be floated. So let's use a descendant selector based on its parent. And its parent is up here, this section. Each has multiple classes, content block, style one, and wave border. This is a modular approach we'll get into more in the next section. The main class we're looking for is content block. Style one and style two are only controlling the two different color schemes. And wave border is adding the repeating background image of the wave to the top of the first section. Finally, in our CSS, our selector is going to be content block figure. So we're targeting any element that has a class of figure inside of an element with a class of content block. So what we'll do here is we'll say float left and we'll refresh. And wow, that was almost too simple. We achieved almost exactly what we set out to do for all three sections. So let's add a background color to the H1 and the P. Just kind of see what's going on here. We'll just give it a background color of green. Notice how the backgrounds go behind the image. The text is flowing to the right, but the elements themselves are no longer seeing the floated element, the image, as part of the normal flow. Floated elements themselves change when their display properties are affected. For instance, the anchor tag, or really the, the anchor with a class of figure that was floated, starts acting like a block level element. It will now respond to width and margin top and bottom as we've seen it already responded to the margin bottom. However, it won't necessarily force a new line. So let's float it right, and that should have a very similar effect. And I'll refresh, floated right. I can use the clear property to stop elements underneath the floated element from misbehaving. For instance, let's add the clear property to the paragraph. So we'll say clear both, which clears both left and right floated elements. After I refresh, you can now see the paragraph text sits below the floated element. And I'll do the same thing for the H1, and that will sit below. I can also just say clear right because the float is floated to the right. And that works. So the H1 also sits below the dot figure. However, clear left here. That wouldn't necessarily because there are no left floated elements here. None is the default value for both float and clear. So I can either say clear none on both of these. And now it goes back to how it was before we added the clear property. But since clear none is the default value, I can just take that whole property away from both of these selectors and it has the same exact effect. I hardly ever use clear left and clear right. The both value seems to be more than adequate most of the time. Okay, so in this video, we've seen the traditional use of floating elements and how elements underneath the float flow around the floated element. This can be stopped using the clear property. This technique is useful, but honestly, 
Floats are even more useful for building multi-column layouts. In the next video, we'll build a multi-column layout.